Good afternoon and welcome to News 9. In fact, uh, the all-important bilateral meeting or bilateral talks between India and Pakistan is now going on at the Deccan Suite in the Hyderabad House. Now, it was just about a few minutes ago when the all-important handshake that took place for 26 long seconds between our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. In fact, uh, we are told that uh, he is to address the media at 2.30. Now, this is after the meeting uh, gets over. Now, sources uh, tell us that it is not a structured meeting which is going on over there, but rather a courtesy call. But still, both the countries are going into this meeting. In fact, the meeting has already begun with a lot of expectations from the Pakistani side, the resumption of composite dialogues, the resolution of the JNK uh, issue, and also resumption and normalization of trade and investment ties from the Indian side. We'll be looking at all important points. Now, India really hopes that Pakistan can stop terrorists or insurgents from using their soil to launch attacks against India. India is also hoping for an assurance from Pakistan Prime Minister on extension of the most favoured nation status or the MFN, MFN status to India that is permitting all Indian goods access to its market. We are also told that uh, economic and trade ties are likely to feature prominently. In fact, this is the big news that we are now tracking. However, Pakistan Prime Minister will address the media at uh, Hotel Taj Mansingh and this should take place at uh, 2.30. At 2 o'clock, we're told that he will meet former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. In fact, uh, we're told that he wanted to meet uh, former Prime Minister Vajpayee yesterday itself, but that could not happen. But uh, he will meet him at 2 o'clock after the meeting with Prime Minister Modi, Modi gets over. In fact, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is as of now meeting his Pakistani counterpart, Nawaz Sharif as part of a series of bilateral meetings with South Asian leaders who witnessed his inauguration on Monday. Now, uh, Prime Minister Modi's meeting with uh, his counterpart, uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, takes place after a long spell of frosty ties over the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks and also tension along the border. Now, officials in the MEA stress that this is not a structured meeting and one cannot expect any major announcements to take place. The MEA sources tell us that uh, these are more of courtesy calls. In fact, about each other, both countries should rid the region of instability and security that has plagued us for decades, unquote. In fact, uh, the Pakistani Prime Minister had stated that he wanted to pick up the broken threads from where then Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee and he had left off in 1999, now just before the Kargil conflict. In fact, it was a very busy morning uh, for the Pakistani Prime Minister before this particular meeting. He had visited the Red Fort, Chandni Chowk and Jama Masjid in the uh, old quarters of Delhi. Well, in fact, uh, Varghese, uh, coming back to you, I'm joined by my colleague Varghese. Uh, we've been discussing about uh, this all-important meeting for the past uh, half an hour or so. Varghese, now, you did state uh, before the last break that there are multiple power structures in Pakistan and everyone knows that it's the army which actually takes the final decision. So, does it really make sense for India to go all out and have a meeting with the Pakistani Prime Minister? I'm not saying it's not good, it's good, but... The ultimate uh, call is from the Pakistani army. Well, Nolan, it could be, Nolan, but at the present, we must look at how the Pakistan army is actually losing influence across the country. At one point of time, it was an organization that completely had uh, control over the country. But ever since the third factor, the uh, what we call as a terror factor has come into being, it's slowly losing grip over the country, especially the Swat region. We see constant fight over to establish the writ of the government over there. Therefore, we look at a retreating Pak army at present. So, how far, but still Still being a very powerful uh, institution, will it be able to influence government policy decisions? Yes, it will be. But what is the extent it can do? That is something now has a question mark on it because of the kind of uh, retreating that we are seeing of the Park Army from a lot of uh, uh, places in the in that uh, country. So uh, we must be looking at it with a little uh, head of caution because over here. 
we are not looking at a Pak army that was as strong as it was uh, during the Musharraf era because of the kind of onslaughts it's been uh, taking in, especially due to uh, minute rebellions from different sections, especially from the Pakistani Taliban as well as other terrorist organizations. It is slowly losing the writ over a lot of places. So still, uh, will it be able to in fact influence? That is something that we need to wait and watch, uh, Nolan. Now, what about the MFN uh, status, the most, fav most favoured nation status to India, permitting all Indian goods free access to their market because we're told that this could be brought out well, the most favoured nation status is part of the confidence building measures and it is something that we uh, benefit a lot, especially with regards to the sugar industry as well as the agricultural produce. They will in fact find, it's not only us in fact, in fact Pakistan too will in fact find it very easy to export its certain uh, fruits uh, as mangoes, kiwis and especially onions is something that we have a lot of demand for. So there will be uh, exchange of agricultural goods, there will be in fact uh, business to business contacts. In fact, Pakistan Pakistan has been looking at uh, developing its BPO sector like the way we have been able to do and we are also looking at an expansion. So there are a lot of these factors that we can come into a good uh, relationship with regards to the MFN status. Uh, but it is not only trade uh, that we have to look at with regards to MFN status, it will also be looking at trading policies that will come into effect where it will be positive for both the countries where uh, traders can in fact move freely as well as their goods can move freely. It will also be a question of how open the border can become if the MFN uh, status is also granted and what uh, from the MFN status what further can it be developed into it could uh, because if you look at the initial way bo both the countries were supposed to be according to the founding fathers it was supposed to be how America and Canada was there should have been a uh, free movement of people as well as trade uh, probably MFN is a status that India has been looking for and uh, Pakistan said it will be giving but because of the domestic pressures in Pakistan the previous regime uh, and the present regime was not able to confer it on India but will that uh, uh, will this present uh, regime be able to in fact Nawaz Sharif will be able to push that status to India well it will be a huge confidence building exercise with regards to it but previously also the MFN status was given to India but it had a lot of riders but will those riders again be placed with uh, the, this time by the new regime also that is something that we need to wait and watch and see uh, Nolan. Now for Varghese, could the uh, Kishan Ganga hydroelectric plant issue also be brought up here because we do know that Pakistan uh, took this case to the Hague's Permanent Court of Arbitration way back in 2011. Well, uh, the Kishikanga project, uh, Nolan, comes from the deep-sensed uh, strategic pol and political thinking of Pakistan uh, with regards to India and especially even it's related to the Kashmir issue, India having control over all its water bodies, especially the sources of its water bodies. Now, the, the, this particular project also comes in that, uh, uh, in that regards and in fact, the Kishikanga Dam project is something where India has been looking as to have a hydroelectric power station which runs uh, where the water is not stored but it's a run-of-the-mill kind of a project where water keeps flowing and only the dynamo is kept functioning so that we can produce the electricity that is the kind of uh, uh, this thing but the pro Pakistan has been in fact projecting it as an effort uh, uh, as an effort by India or uh, probably some of those anti India esta establishment within the Pakistan regime has been projecting this particular project as an attempt to control the water resources of the country and that is why they had taken this particular project to uh, Hague as you rightly mentioned but in Hague also they had given a uh, uh, they had given a observation saying that this is a run of the mill project not intended at uh, controlling the water flow into Pakistan. So uh, this has been a strategic thought for Pakistan. And the uh, the resistance against the Kishiganga project, in fact, comes from the uh, strategic thinking that India might one day take over the water resources of Pakistan, uh, especially the, at its source, and in fact strangulate Pakistan uh, uh, through by not uh, letting water flow through its country, uh, drying up its rivers. Now this has been a very uh, important uh, the part of the strategic thinking against India so uh, probably those fears stem from that but again will the, uh, this could be one of those issues that Pakistan might rate because it is something of great concern for them uh, but India has always maintained the stand that it is not intended at controlling the flow of rivers or anything of that sort Nolan. Right uh, Burgis thank you very much uh, for all those uh, details in fact uh, regarding this particular hydro project we are told that it was Pakistan who took this to the International Court of Arbitration. However, the International Court of Arbitration gave its final award on the 20th of December 2013, wherein it allowed India to go ahead with the construction 
of the Kishan Ganga Dam in JNK over which Pakistan had raised objections.